Hi everyone, I'm Tom from Moropo. Today I'm going to show you how we can improve the end-to-end -end mobile testing process using Expo and Moropo. First, for a little bit of context. So the old way of running end-to-end -end tests on mobile looks something like this. We change some code, we'd push up a pull request, We'd wait for a binary build process to happen to produce our new iOS or Android binary, taking 15 minutes or more. We'd wait for our end-to-end -end test results to come back. Often this is taking 20 minutes or more using technologies such as Appium and Detox. And we'd get results back on our pull request. But the overall wait time was often over 30 minutes. And this is just too slow for modern app development. Now, the new way looks a little bit like this. We're still gonna change some code. We're still gonna push up that pull request, but instead of performing a, a binary build, we're actually just gonna do an EAS update. That's only gonna take a few minutes. And instead of running through a lengthy end-to-end -end testing process, we're gonna use Moropo to quickly test our app. And what that means is that we can get results back on our pull request in under 15 minutes, much quicker feedback cycle and enable us to get on with a lot more app development. So the first thing I need to do to make this work is set up my Expo app. I've got an Expo app here in VS Code. Initially, what I need to go and do is build a Expo dev client. I can do that with the EAS build command. I've got a profile set up called Development Simulator. In this case, I'm going to be building for iOS, but these same steps apply just the same for Android. EAS is then going to go and take my bundle and build my dev client. I prepared one earlier. I've downloaded this, and this is what we're going to be using later in Moropo. So next, I need to also make sure I've got a channel published in my Expo account. So for that purposes, I'm going to use EAS update command with the channel flag. And here I'm going to call this channel Expo Moropo. run the EAS update process. Again, I'm going to grab my JavaScript bundle and push that up to Expo servers. Great. Now that pub publish is complete, I can go and click on this link to go and open this inside my Expo account. And here you can see the update has occurred. And the channel Expo Moropo has been created as well. So that's everything I need to do in Expo right now. Now I can switch over into Moropo. I'm just in moropo.com. And I've followed the link to sign up. I've added in my account details. My app is called Classy Mall. And now I'm going to upload the Expo dev client I downloaded earlier. Now note that for iOS, this needs to be a dot app dot zip suffix. So I'm just going to go in here and compress this. And also just add my dot app dot zip extension. and drag that in to upload. I'm not going to set up any notifications right now, but I am going to set up the Expo integration. So the first thing I need to do here is get my Expo token. I can get that from my Expo account. If I head back to my dashboard down to access tokens, I can create a new token here. Moropo integration. 
copy that token into my Moreover account. And now select which Expo account I want to connect. In this case, it's Wriggler. I add in my Expo project name. Now you can see this in your projects here. This is your project name. Search release channels using EAS update. And you can see here my Expo Moropo channel has appeared. Select that. That's going to be the default release channel that Expo uses every time that Moropo uses every time it loads. Moropo's going to take us into the test editor here where it's grabbing us a fresh iPhone 14 simulator on iOS 16.4 because we uploaded an iOS app. And I've just made a new test here and I've called it check for outdoor store because that's the assertion that we're going to be performing. So when you start with a fresh Moropo test, it's going to have just a single maestro command in it, which is this launch app command. Now, if I go ahead and run that, what, we'll, what you'll see happen is it'll actually launch into that dev client that we uploaded and it will show Expo's dev client settings here. Now, instead, we want to launch directly into our bundle so that we can begin testing with the JavaScript that we bundled up earlier. So instead, what we're going to be doing is copying this command from the docs here switch into script mode, paste that in. And this command uses two variables that exist inside Moropo. One is the bundle ID. That's the app identifier that we've pulled directly from the binary. And the second is the expo release channel. And that is the release channel that we configured when we set up the integration. So if I play that instead, what we'll see is that it's actually going to open up my app need to perform a tap on for this modal. And now we're into the Expo onboarding screen. Tap on continue. And then I want to just swipe down to get rid of this bottom sheet here. Okay, excellent. Now we're into the app itself and we can perform some generic actions to mimic a simple regression test. So this is the map screen. Uh, then we might go and tap on bike shop, for example. Let's say we take another screenshot. shop we could then go and scroll take another screenshot call this one opening hours and then finally we could tap back to go to the map screen and perform our assertion in this case all i'm going to do is assert visible the outdoor store is present uh, and you can see where, where I've picked up the selector here. Moropo is just selecting, just choosing this ID of garden shops. Now, in my case, I don't want to use the ID, although the ID is obviously going to be reliable for tapping on things. In this case, I'm just asserting that the text is correct. So I'm going to change this selector type from ID to text and put out door store there. Excellent. So let's save that test and get everything set up CI. The first thing I need to do is add a scheduled test run. So this is to tell Moropo that there's going to be a connection and that connection is to CI CD. this github pr 
I need to select my build. In this case, I'll just choose the latest iOS build. That's the dev client I uploaded earlier. I will select an iPhone. And I'm just going to say all tests. So just a basic suite. I'm going to run every test I want to. That gives me this ID here. And this is what I'm going to use later in my GitHub action configuration. Excellent. So the next thing I need to do is configure my GitHub action. And there's a few different steps that need to happen here. The first is around pull requests. So I need to make sure that I have right access. That's because Maripa is going to write a comment into my pull request with the test results in it. Then I'm going to use Expo's GitHub action. I need to provide it with an Expo token, and that needs to be added into my GitHub secrets. I can get one of those the same way I did earlier by heading to access tokens, create a new token, GitHub. Copy that token and then add that into the secrets of my repository. Call this expo token. And that's secrets.expo token. Then we install our dependencies. And then we're going to create a preview. So this sub action inside the GitHub action for Expo creates a preview and that uses the EAS update channel command, which is the same command we used earlier to push up onto our channel. Except this time, instead of me calling it Moroko Expo, I'm going to call it this pull request head reference, which is being pulled from GitHub. So that's a unique reference straight from GitHub. And then I'm going to hook up my Maropo action. So this is the action trigger test run at V2. And there's a couple of secrets that I need to add here as well. The first is that I need this Maropo API key inside my GitHub. I can get that by going back to Maropo, head to my API keys, copy my API key from here and add that in as a repository secret as well. Robo API key. So that's that added in. I also need to pass in my scheduled test ID into the action configuration. So if I head back to my scheduled test, copy that ID from my GitHub PR schedule, paste that in. And finally, I also need my Expo project ID. This is a UID that exists inside your Expo dashboard. The projects, click on my project, in this case, Glassy More, and here you can see the ID. So copy that and paste that in there. And this is the bit that Moropo was doing the work for us earlier, where it's form forming the release channel URL. And this is the format you need. This is included in the docs for this particular action. So you should be able to copy and paste and form it yourself relatively easily. Excellent. So that's everything that we need for our Moropo PR action. The last bit I'm going to do before we push this up to GitHub is introduce a regression. So if you remember earlier, we're asserting the outdoor store is spelled correctly. Now I'm just going to add, change that T to an R, so it says R door store. And that should therefore make our test fail. So we've got two changes. Let's go and push those up. So 
So I'm going to create a new pull request with my changes on from my new branch. And create that pull request. And that's going to trigger the Moropo action that we created, this GitHub action. So if I click details on this, I can see it running through the setup process. We're now publishing to EAS, setting up EAS rather. Uh, and then we're going to install our dependencies and then we're going to perform our EAS update to publish our bundle. Our dependencies have been installed and now the EAS update command is running with our channel changes to store. That's pulled in from the GitHub head reference. This create preview step usually takes around 50 seconds. In this case, it took 53 seconds. And now we've successfully triggered our test run. Here is our test run, check for outdoor store, running on iPhone 15 17.2. And this test is in progress at the moment inside Moropo's cloud. There we go, our test has failed. And here we can see, go to bike shop. We go back to the map view and our assertion that outdoor store is visible has failed because it has changed to our door store. So it's correctly failed and the screenshots have been pulled through. Now back on our pull request, we can see as well that Moropo has added a comment to our pull request saying the tests that failed on the devices that have failed on and also giving us a link to the results so that we can go and look in a bit more detail. There we go. Three minutes to publish a Expo bundle and around four minutes to run the Moropo test. So our total result time uh, comfortably under 10 minutes. Obviously that's going to be longer adding more tests in and longer, more complicated tests, but still a super quick and super easy process compared to what we used to have to deal with a few years ago. I hope that's been helpful. If you have any questions, you can find me on Moropo's Discord. I'm also on Expo's Discord. If you go to subscribepage.io slash 7 maestro tips, you can also sign up for my short email course on Maestro Reliability. You get seven tips over seven days to improve your Maestro tests and produce more reliable results. So give that a go if you are interested in more in the Maestro space. Thanks for listening.